This video covers identity, inverse, and zero property. I call them the I properties and the zero property. The identity property is the first one we're going to talk about. And basically it's any number plus zero will equal the same number or any number times one will equal the same number. Both of them have a number, you do something to it and then you end up with the same number. We're going to talk about adding and multiplying. So basically, 4 plus something is 4. That mystery number would be a 0. And then we have 9 plus something equaling 9. That mystery number is going to be a 0 again. And then we have 2 fifths plus some kind of number equaling 2 fifths. It's still going to be 0. Over here for multiplying, you have 4 times some number equaling 4. That's going to be a 1. And then you have 9 times something equaling 9. That's going to be a 1 again. And then we have 2 fifths times something equaling 2 fifths. That's still going to be a 1. So you can either add 0 or multiply by 1 to get the same number. The identity element for addition. That's that thing you're doing to the number. What are you adding to the number to get the same number? The identity element is going to be 0. And then the identity element for multiplying, what can you multiply a number by to get the same number? That's going to be the 1. Identity element for adding is 0. Identity element for multiplying is 1. We're going to move on now to the inverse property. Any number plus its opposite will equal 0. Any number times its reciprocal will equal 1. So a lot of kids get inverse confused with identity. The thing you want to realize is inverse, you end up with 0 and you end up with 1. Whereas identity, they were involved with the operations. So let's do a few examples. So we've got 4 plus something equaling 0 this time. You'd add its opposite. And then you have 9 plus something equaling 0. You add its opposite, negative 9. 2 fifths plus something equals 0. You're adding the negative 2 fifths. Over here from multiplying, you're ending up with 1. This one can be a little confusing because finding the reciprocal of 4 can be a little bit weird. You want to think of 4 as 4 over 1. And then reciprocal is when you take a fraction and you turn it upside down, basically. So 4 times 1 fourth is equal to 1. 9 times something equals 1. You want to think of it as 9 over 1 and then flip it. Take its reciprocal. It's 1 ninth. And then 2 fifths, this one's fairly easy. 2 fifths times something equals 1. It's going to be 5 over 2. Now the math logic behind that you can sit down with a teacher and talk about. But anything times its reciprocal equals 1. Notice how all of these, the result for additive inverse, for all the adding side, you end up with 0. It's not involved with the, with the operation, but it's the result. Same thing for multiplying. You have the result for multiplicative inverse always being 1. So you end up with 0 and 1. So now we're going to talk about the 0 property. Any number times 0 will equal 0. So here's some examples. You've got 4 times something equals 0. Well, a 0 can go in there. 9 times something equals 0. You can put a 0 in there. 2 fifths times something equals 0. It's going to be 0. With the 0 property, something will appear on both sides of the equation. Well, there's a 0 to the left of the equal sign. There's a 0 to the right of the equal sign. Zeros are going to be on both sides of the equation. So what we're going to do now is go through a couple examples and we'll see if you can name the properties. So we've got 5 times n equals 1. This would be a good time to pause and then try to figure it out and then keep playing. So we've got 5 times n equaling 1. As soon as we see that we're ending up with 1, that means it's an inverse property. You're ending up with 1. It's an inverse property. 
be what would the value of n have to be? You're multiplying by 5. That's going to have to be the reciprocal of 5. Think of 5 as 5 over 1 if you need to. And this is definitely going to be inverse property of multiplication. Inverse for multiplying. Now we've got 5 times a number equaling 0. As soon as you see you're ending up with 0, it could be two properties. It could be either inverse or 0 property. So then you need to look back at the, uh, the part where there's an operation. We would need to figure out that n is going to have to be something, let's see, what times 5 is 0? That's going to have to be a 0. So that means 0 is on both sides, so it's the 0 property for multiplication. Sometimes you'll hear it called the multiplicative property of 0. Just notice how 0 is on both sides of the equation sign. So now we have 5 times a number equaling 5. You're ending up with the same number. You got a 5 on the left, a 5 on the right. That means it's some kind of identity property. Well, the value of n has to be a 1 because 5 times 1 equals 5. And that's going to be your identity property for multiplying. And then just to make sure, what's the identity element for multiplying? It would be that one. Identity element, that's an important term you need to know. Five plus a number equals five. We're ending up with the same number. It means it's going to be some kind of identity property. What would the value of n have to be? It's going to have to be zero. Because five plus zero equals five. And that's going to be identity property for adding this time. And then what is the identity element for adding? Well, what did you add to 5? It's a 0. So now we're ending up with 0 again. We've got 5 plus a number equaling 0. A lot of kids will see that 0 and automatically think, oh, it's got to be the 0 property. Double check the math, though. Seeing that 0, it could be the 0 property, but it could also be the inverse property. So now you need to figure out what n is to figure out the whole thing. So now you need to figure out what the value of n would be. And so if you do adding opposites, 5 plus its opposite would be 0. That n has to be negative 5. It's going to be the inverse property of addition. You're ending up with 0.